<sighs> okay, so I think of my childhood and how the enemy began working the script that I would unknowingly rehearse in my mind over and over again. And the script would say things like, Amy, you're not enough. Amy, you're not loved. Amy, you're alone. And so these words from the enemy would just play in the background of my mind. As I would grow older, the enemy would press upon my mind the evidence of those things, and he was really good at it. Like, Amy, if you were loved, maybe that time uh, your mom attempted suicide in front of you, if you were loved, maybe that wouldn't have happened. Or, Amy, if you were enough, maybe your dad would have put down the bottle. Amy, if you were enough. And he would rehearse these things in my mind. And I began to believe them because the evidence was strong enough. And it would build, Amy, you're broken. Because remember what that man did to you when you were a child. Remember when you cried out for help and there was no one there to help you. Remember the time that you screamed and cried for someone, anyone, to rescue you and there was no one. And so the enemy would say, Amy, you're alone because remember those times. I think today, as I look at my life, I consider myself to be blessed, like super blessed. I have two amazing kids, both um, love God, love Jesus. I have a loving husband. We have been married since we were 18. So again, I just consider myself blessed. And looking, looking at our life from the outside, people might think that it's always been that way, but it didn't start that way. My life um, started turbulent from the beginning. Um, I was born into a family who was, my dad was an alcoholic and my mom was also a drug addict. Um, so you can imagine, you know, that combination just does not create for a loving environment. But you know, the enemy in my mind did not count on the fact that my dad would become saved and begin praying for his daughters. The enemy didn't count on the Precious Moments Story Bible that would be given to me. And in my loneliest times, I would take comfort in the words that that Bible would have and hold. The enemy didn't count on me finding a friend in sixth grade. This lonely, broken girl found one friend that would invite her to Pine Ridge Bible Camp where I would raise my hand and I would say, yes, I want Jesus as my savior. And so I raised my hand and I became saved in sixth grade. And so the Lord began this script simultaneously. Eventually it would become known to me. So in sixth grade, when I became saved, all of my problems did not go away. My mom still continued to do drugs and um, boyfriends were in and out of the house. And while the camp experience was amazing, going back into a world that was abusive and turbulent, um, and I didn't know where to go to build my faith, um, I eventually made friends in high school that led me to alcohol and although I stepped into that world for a time, I believe that I was like protected because I dabbled in alcohol. I never did drugs. I feel like it could have been so much worse. And so I met the boy that I would eventually marry and his endless pursuits. Um, his love brought me to church where the foundation of my faith would grow and I would learn the Word of God and it would take root in my heart. And I believed 
everything that it said. There was something inside me that knew the truth. I would meet a basketball coach, Jeff Walker, who would bravely pray for his basketball players and preach and teach the word of God at practice. Little by little, my faith began to grow. The strength of my spirit began to grow. And so the script that the enemy held for me was eventually replaced by the one that Christ wrote for me on the cross. The one that said, you are blessed and highly favored. You are above and not beneath. You are the head and not the tail. And so eventually I would begin to read the word and believe it in my heart. And all of those things that I believed as a child, that I was broken, that I was lonely, that no one loved me, that no one cared for me, would eventually go away because Christ's word and the work of the cross would become stronger in me. And so today, I feel like I stand here whole and healed because of the word of God. Now my scars are still there, no doubt. The memories come back and there's still a part of me that, that hurts, but it's, it's not who I am. I'm hurting for the child that I used to be, but now I stand in victory for the work of the cross and for Jesus. My name is Amy Gardner and this is my story.